Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another special edition of our weekly style snack. Every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, I go live and share a style snack with you. And in the last few weeks, um, we've been talking about signature style, what that means, why it matters, how you get one. And so this week, I've been going live every day to share with you about um, one of the classic style twists that I've written about. I've written about five of them, cute classic, edgy classic, minimal classic, soft classic, and sporty classic. Today we're talking about soft classic. Classic style has its own style, but for a lot of us, classic style is practically perfect, but we need to bring in some other twists to make it our own. And so these are not the only five variations of classic style. They are as endless as the women who wear them. They're just the five that I've written about so far. And um, I am going in depth on one a day this week because next week we are doing the style twist challenge. Each season, we do a shop your closet challenge where I provide inspiration outfits, uh, one a day, and then you shop your closet to adapt that outfit to the weather that you're currently having, um, your personal preferences, what you already own. That's key. We're not going out and buying new clothes for this. We are shopping our closets. And this time we're doing a new twist of it on our, one of our favorite things, this shop your closet challenge by incorporating our classic style twist. So this week I've been sharing each day an in-depth look at the variations so that next week you're prepared to essentially play dress up with me. Grown up dress up. And it's so much fun. It's one of our very favorite things that we do each season. And you can join the uh, style twist challenge by going to stunningstyle.com forward slash twist. And um, <clears throat> if you join, if you register to join, every time you share an outfit in the group, you will be entered to win a $100 gift card from Kendra Scott. I just love her jewelry. This is not sponsored. She doesn't know I exist. <laughs> I, I bought the gift card with my own money. Um, I just love what she has. And I love um, that she has something for everyone. She has what she calls the color bar. So you can choose like the style, the shape of the piece of jewelry. You can choose what metal it comes in. You can choose the color of the stones. Most of them are genuine stones. Um, and it's just really beautifully made jewelry that will last you a lifetime. I have several pieces of my own and she has so many different styles. There's something for everyone there. So those are all the reasons that I've chosen that. And, um, y'all loved it in the past. And, um, yeah, so that's what we're doing. And if you've missed, we did Monday, we did minimal classic Tuesday. We did cute classic Wednesday. Yesterday we did edgy classic today. We're doing soft classic tomorrow will be sporty classic. If you missed those, you can uh, find them under the videos tab, wherever you're watching, or you can find them on my website at stunningstyle.com as well. If you're on my email list, you would have gotten an email um, one a day when the videos were uploaded and you can either read or watch the videos. Whether you think you are any one of these or not, I encourage you to look at all of them because you might be surprised at what they each mean. And you, even if you know for sure that you're not cute classic, for example, well, knowing what is cute classic will help you avoid inadvertently purchasing something that has some of those details that really just don't work for you. Knowing what to stay away from is just as important as knowing what to get. So, <laughs> excuse me. Let's get going about soft classic. Um, so many of you have just expressed how helpful these lives have been, and I, I'm so glad. And um, my favorite part of this is always the conversation that comes at the end. So please add your questions, add your comments. And when I'm done, we'll chat. 
So when it comes to soft classic, I know that you have met this woman before. She's lovely. That's a, a word you would use to describe her. She's lovely. She's elegant. She's regal. She moves and speaks with authority. But there's also a grace and a softness to her that she embraces. She makes you want to stare, but you're quiet about it because if she catches you, she'll be startled and possibly freeze momentarily before continuing on her way, just like a deer in the forest. She probably doesn't recognize herself in this description, but the rest of us do. She sits so still. She has a very intense depth to her gaze. It's not intense in the I'm staring you down way. It's intense in the I'm, I'm truly seeing you way. She listens very intently to what you have to say. And she's very good at giving you her undivided attention. When you have a conversation with her, uh, you feel like the only person in the world. Do you know this woman? I do. She's intensely interested in what you have to say. Um, I have a friend who is soft and classic and she is quiet, reserved, very still. And you might mistake her for a statue when she's sitting in a chair. So she's also the, one of the most reliable and trustworthy people I know. She has very deep feelings and sometimes she can't keep the tears from spilling over, but she's also a little horrified if someone sees her cry. She's a vault and extremely hard to get to know, but if you manage to crack the code, she is one of the greatest and most devoted friends you'll ever have. And when she dresses to represent who she is, um, she can sink into that softness a little bit more. So if you want your outfit to match your soft classic side, it's the subtle details that will tell the story. And that word subtle is really important. Look for touchable fabrics, smaller prints, soft florals, lace, ruffles, softer edges, neutrals, soothing colors, subtle details, simplicity, and length. And if right now you that sounds like you're going to drown, <laughs> like it's too much, just keep listening because I'll tell you how to make it perfect for you. Touchable fabrics can include chiffon, velvet, knits, silk, cashmere, shearling, things you want to wrap up in, you are particularly sensitive to things that are too tight and restrictive, scratchy, uncomfortable, itchy, or stiff. Ponte knit is a great option for you because it's stretchy, but very structured. So ask yourself, would I want to hug someone who was wearing because they're wearing this, right? Or would I want to wrap myself in this? Then that's a great option for you. Small prints and soft florals like wildflowers and watercolors. Even if you wear pure vibrant colors, the edges of the print might be blurred, like Monet painting. If the print is too large, it might feel overwhelming. Lace is about as soft as it gets. It's typically a floral pattern, it has soft, undefined edges in the pattern, and um, you can find it in those soothing neutral colors that you love. Ruffles flow and have soft edges to them, and being classic means you probably don't want too many. You don't want them too big or too wavy, and they need to um, lie down. 
Other soft edges could be the corners of your hemline, like in a jacket, or the lapel of your jacket might have a soft collar. So the bottom corner of your jacket, instead of being a perfect angle, might have that curved edge of it, like on a blazer. A shawl collar instead of the notched collar. Your sleeve hem um, might be flared um, or wavy, but not so big that it gets in your way. You love neutral colors. And when you add a color, um, it's not usually more than one per outfit. And you might even limit it to your lip color. So um, wearing too many actual colors can make you feel overwhelmed. Subtle details are key. Nothing in your look is overpowering or jumps out. You prefer your look to be cohesive and not overwhelming. And um, an overwhelming statement piece is probably not going to feel very comfortable for you. You're more likely to prefer some length in your tops um, or skirts or dresses. A straight maxi skirt without too much flare or swish, uh, a long jacket that's cut straight but still has some structure, a tailored tunic top or a longer pendant necklace, but not all of those in one outfit. It's more about um, choosing one. Black can feel a little too stark for you, so you may prefer navy. And sometimes you like a sheen, like in silk, but not always a high shine, like high shine metallics. Look for, in your accessories, look for dainty, delicate, and soft edges in your jewelry. Pearls, pendants, soft patterns, possibly um, you're the most likely to like a matching set of earrings and necklace. <clears throat> filigree and scroll, scroll patterns, but nothing so long or heavy or swingy that it really gets in your way. Studs are a great earring option for you. You typically, if you go with length in the necklace, stick to stud earrings. And if you choose long earrings, stick to something minimal in your necklace. Your shoes, you probably prefer a more round or almond toe and you prioritize comfort. And I mean comfort in the literal sense of you will not wear anything that pinches your toes, chafes, rubs. Um, that's very grating to you. And shoes can be a great place for you to bring in color because it's a small amount of real estate and not too overwhelming. You probably prefer your makeup to be a little softer as well, and you may actually love no makeup, a very fresh face. Um, but if you choose makeup and you just want to bring a little definition to your face without feeling too made up, the French makeup aesthetic can be perfect for you. Brows, lashes, and either a bold or neutral lip. Doing your brows and your lashes and your lips frame the face just enough to give definition without feeling overwhelming or too bold for your soft side. So if you have light brows and, and eyelashes, but you don't want um, the heaviness of um, like filling in your eyebrows or wearing mascara, like that can feel heavy to you. Dyeing them or tinting them can be a great way to get that uh, definition and a more natural look um, without the heaviness of, of feeling overly made up. You might love a soft, smoky eye paired with a light a lighter neutral lip color for something uh, for going out. But an overall neutral makeup look is probably perfect for you for a day-to-day -day look. The one great place for you to soften your look is in your hair. So instead of the really severe, um, crisp hair, blunt 
you know, look that a minimal classic can often favor. You probably prefer structured hairstyles with softer edges. So instead of a blunt bob, maybe um, a softer bob with a little curl or just some loose and wavy curls, not tight and bouncy. And you have the kind of hairstyle that someone could run their fingers through. It's not stiff and sticky. It's not um, overly perfect, every, every strand perfectly in place, but it's neat and tidy. Um, it's just not severe. So one, let's look at, um, let's talk about the balance because that's really important. You will look at these classic clothing items and they can feel too structured, too tight, too suffocating. So a slight variation on these classic favorites can be make all the difference. R sprinkling in some romantic details can add a whisper of softness. So your favorite striped Breton tee might have um, a cowl neckline and a, a cowl neckline um, has a, it's like a turtleneck that fell down <laughs> is the best way to describe it. And it can be as subtle as, well, so this one kind of does that. This is a mock neck, but it collapses a little bit as I wear it, maybe because I am a forward head thruster, but um, it can be as subtle as this, or it can be like a real kind of a waterfall, um, but it'll have maybe just a softened neckline. Your black pencil skirt might actually have um, a soft A-line cut, for ease of movement and comfort. Your button-ups might be less tailored and in a less structured uh, fabric, a softer version of that cotton and maybe not quite as much seaming and tailoring. You probably prefer a narrower stripe and lower contrast than a wider, bolder stripe and your black flats or heels might have a round or almond toe and a medium heel height. Um, scarves are a great accessory for you to bring in a little softness and some color and pattern without feeling overwhelmed by them. And it's just, it's all about balance. So the trick is to have a minimal classic foundation, if minimal is your first twist, and then choose one or two soft details. So if you choose a scarf um, that's looser and the way you've tied it, your shirt probably you'll prefer to have it to be more fitted and tailored without being uncomfortably tight. And if you choose to wear a maxi dress or skirt, you'll prefer a straighter, more um, tailored line to it <clears throat> and a more tailored line up top. It can be as subtle as a velvet blazer with a rounded lapel paired with structured but stretchy and comfortable jeans and a tailored top. The softness of that velvet material with the rounded softened edges on that blazer might be just enough to soften an otherwise classic look. Um, you might love one of the kimono style cardigans with very classic tailored jeans and a top or a dolman sleeve top with structured well-fitted pants. But if you had a dolman sleeve and a cowl neck and a, a maxi skirt, that might feel like you're drowning in fabric and could be way too much. So maybe you like scarves as long as they are worn up higher and don't fall below your breastbone where it's going to get in the way and everything else in your outfit is very tailored. So it's really 
all about you, your preferences, how much is enough and how much is too much um, and how much is not enough. Do you feel too rigid and structured? Um, do you feel frumpy and dumpy? Then you've gone too far one way or the other. If you feel frumpy and dumpy, you've gone too far with your softness and you need to rein it back in with some structure and minimize what is going on. You might be happiest getting your soft details in layers and accessories and having a tailored classic um, column underneath. But only you will know the balance. If you feel overwhelmed with all the softness and texture, um, it's too much. And if you feel overly structured, there might not be enough. So start with one detail in your outfit and see if that's enough. If you feel like you need more, add something else. Some women want more, some women want less, and it can vary very much day to day what you need. So one thing that really trips some of you up is, no, wait a second, April, wait a second. On Tuesday, you said that cute classics like florals and round toed shoes and um, ruffles and bows and what, what do you, you just said come with a lot of the same things for soft classic. Where is the difference between cute and soft? The difference is cute is youthful, girly, fun, light, and soft is soft. It's elegant. It's um, cute is up, soft is down. So a cute classics ruffles will lift up. They will, the, the gathers on her sleeve will come up and out and her bow will come up like this. Your ruffles will lie down. They'll come down. Your bow will fall down. It's not perky and upright. It's soft and relaxed. So those details, yours are soft and relaxed. That's a really a better way to describe it. They are not as perky and upright. And the florals, the Q Classics prefer a larger, bolder floral print and typically in a distinct um, outline. There's no doubt about the shape of your flowers. Soft classics tend to prefer smaller, less distinct floral patterns, um, more like wildflowers and less like um, annuals. If you're a gardener, you know, annuals are always very vibrant, um, really vibrant in color. They're bigger, like, you know, depends on where you live, right? What is an annual and what isn't? But we're going to pretend you don't live in Southern Florida where it's summer year round. Um, but like pansies and daisies and like those are very vibrant. They're, they have a lot of life and structure to them. Where wildflowers are smaller, they're daintier, they're more delicate. The colors are not as vibrant. Um, and they don't have as distinct of a shape. Wildflowers, you tend to get uh, a better view of what they are from a distance. And when you get close up, you kind of can't see where the flower ends and the rest of the plant begins. Um, so those are some of the differences. And if a, a soft classic woman, um, little girls, play dress up to look like a soft classic woman, right? And um, if it looks at all, and the cute classic women, I, I don't want I want to say this correctly. 
two classic women wear things that also can be worn by young girls, but they wear it in a grown-up way. Similar concept executed very differently. So if it looks like it would be appropriate for a young girl's wardrobe, because we all know that young girls' clothing, there's just a theme to it, and there's just kind of this, these, this predetermined um, idea of how little girls should dress. If it looks like that, then it's not for a soft classic woman. Um, cute classic will wear a round toed shoe, but their reasons are different for it. They will prefer more color, more shine, more bling, more glitter on those shoes. But a soft classic wears those round toed shoes, one, for comfort, like literal, I cannot, my, my toes need room. I can't take the squeezing and the pinching. And they are also not going to go for all of the shiny, shiny bright, uh, sparkly details. Um, so your key words as a soft classic are simple, subtle, and relaxed. So let's look at some examples of what this looks like. And I hope that this helps. So I like to do the whole verbal description first, and then we can break these down. Like I can show you what that looks like in these examples. So Jessica Alba is a great example of soft classic. Sometimes she gets into the boho, um, but a lot of times she does the soft, the soft classic. She uh, almost always does a very tailored classic column. She's got a, a tailored crisp white tee, these fabulous navy pants, ultra minimal classic, ultra, right? But then she likes to layer on something soft on top. This is one of Jessica Alba's uniforms. And we talked about this a little bit um, a few weeks ago when we were talking about signature style. This is very much part of her signature style. Her hair is always these loose curls, right? Almost always a nude neutral lip, but she might do a soft smoky eye like she's doing here. And <clears throat> she, her hair is very touchable, right? Um, it's very, it's neat. Her hairstyle is neat. She obviously brushed and curled and did her hair, but not every hair is perfectly in place. She's got a little tendril coming loose. She has these um, hoop earrings, very simple. They're not super wide. Um, they're thinner and more delicate. Um, delicate is another great word to use for a soft classic. And uh, it appears that she did not do um, a necklace with this one. So you can see that her hair is the soft, her makeup is soft. She doesn't have harsh lines on her makeup. It's all a little blurred and soft, not a heavy color in the, in the lip either but the base of her outfit is very structured and minimal. And this is, this is a, a uniform that she wears all the time and it's perfect for her. If she went too far into the soft, she would drown, right? And if she, she occasionally goes really uh, heavy into the minimal, almost always it's like formal dress up wear, like red carpet. Um, and it's not really her. So when I was, uh, for the, uh, body shape course, you know, I find pictures of celebrities where that have these body shapes to demonstrate my point. I could not tell you for the life of me, what body shape Jessica Alba has, because I've never seen her outline. You, you, I have no idea. She's always wearing something that obscures the shape of her figure because she wears these 
um, soft layers on top. So here again, classic striped t-shirt, but you'll notice that the stripes are narrow, close together. They are not wide or bold, and that narrow close together makes them lower contrast. Um, and she's got some very classic jeans on, classic sandals, you know, parallel lines, but, and, and her bag is even classic. Her hair is straight here, but it's still soft. Uh, I don't think she probably even has to use hairspray, right? But she has pulled it back softly here on the sides. Like the ends aren't blunt. Um, it's not overly perfect. It's perfect for her, but it's not so rigid and perfect that um, she looks harsh. And again, she's got that soft makeup look, um, but she has a very soft daytime smoky eye, a neutral lip, a very delicate little necklace. She does have on a substantial watch, which is pretty classic, but a very dainty bracelet with it. And I can't see if she has any earrings on. But again, this is um, a more casual version of her uniform. So let's look at um, another blogger. Her name is Mary and her website is memorandum.com. And she has nailed her soft classic look. I mean, just nailed it. And here she's got, this is a casual look. She does a lot of um, off business professional office looks. That's why it's called memorandum.com. Um, and she is just, I mean, see what I'm saying? She's just gorgeous. <laughs> She's just gorgeous. She's got those soft curls, right? Very touchable looking hair. Her curls are not tight and springy. They're relaxed and soft. She's wearing a cowl neck sweater and a dolman sleeve in one sweater, but underneath it, she has a more structured um, turtleneck that still has some softness up here. It's not like my turtleneck sweaters are there's no folding like that. Like it is, it is tight. It folds, it stays flat. Hers has a little bit of a ripple to it, but she's wearing very structured jeans and um, very classic booties. She's got a very classic structure bag, the classic aviator sunglasses and a simple long pendant necklace. So this might be a little too soft for some of you. It might be just soft enough for some of you. And um, it's just, she is wearing uh, some color in her lip, but it's not in, um, and it's a, a more intense color than what Jessica Alba had, but it's not um, as intense as like what I wear, like the ultra red. She, hers is a pinker, more berry, like a softer berry color. Um, and She's just, I have a girl crush on her. I'll be totally honest. She's beautiful. And she kind of, you know, has my dream, almost dream wardrobe. This is a perfect example of how soft classic can go to the office. She's wearing a very structured classic button up uh, blouse buttoned all the way to the top, which is really like, you know, that's where the term buttoned up comes from. Like it's, it's, uh, represents that very rigid, you know, look, she's wearing these classic straight, um, basically suit pants, pointed toe heels, but then she's taken this, um, large scarf and turned it into a jacket by draping it across her shoulders and belting it. So this scarf is, there's a lot of it, right? But she has tamed it with the belt. So it's not flopping all over the place, but it's given her a soft dolman sleeve look. She's got the fringe hanging off the bottom, which is 
adding softness to it. It's a much softer version of a blazer, but in the pattern, it's got, she's got the plaid structured pattern. So if she had done this with a large floral pattern and it's in a substantial fabric that looks like wool or cashmere, if she had done this with a soft flowy fabric in a floral, that might have been too much for her. It, this is her, you know, on that day, what she needed, this was enough. Uh, she's got more of a nude lip today. Her hair is not as curly as it was the in the last picture, but it's soft. You could, you look, it looks touchable. Like um, you could touch her hair. The wind could blow. And when she comes into the building out of the wind, her hair will just kind of fall back to where it was because it's not an overly um, perfect. And I mean that in like a, a structured, like, way her hair soft and it will just it'll look fine after the wind blows here is another casual look and here she's mixed in a little sporty so she's got on a classic striped tee but it has a dropped shoulder seam so you know shoulder seams are usually right up here that dropped shoulder seam has softened that top already. Um, when a shoulder seam is dropped that much, it usually includes a larger armhole, but not necessarily so big that it's a dolman, but not as tight. Like that arm, I can guarantee you that armpit hole is not up against her skin. Um, and it's got a soft cowl neck. This is one that it's, like I said, it's more like a turtleneck that uh, laid down just a little bit but it's not um, so large that it's hanging down to her bust because they can, you know, like her sweater was a larger cowl neck that came down further. Very classic uh, off-white jeans, a really structured classic bag, and then some very simple sneakers. And she's stuck to a pretty neutral color palette. That top is not black and white. It looks like it might be charcoal and white, maybe a navy and white. Um, and again, the, stri the stripes are not really white and bold. So compared to what we saw um, in the minimal classic where the stripes were wider and bolder and in the edgy classic, even wider and bolder, hers are narrower, they're closer together and the colors are not quite as high contrast because she's not wearing stark, stark white and black. It's maybe a charcoal and a little bit of an ivory and she stuck to a completely neutral color palette, including her lip color. And again, her hair looks beautiful, but touchable. Here is a great example of um, the lace. So again, the structured white crisp button up the structured classic straight leg jeans, pointy toe heels. And then even her cardigan is very straight and structured, but it's made of lace. And so that soft lace pattern has softened what could otherwise be an overly rigid look for her. She has a, just a simple, um, that could be a wire choker. Her belt is black, very simple. The whole outfit is neutral in color, but she, she did do black in the belt and the shoes, but her cardigan is gray. The shirt is white. The jeans are denim. Um, and she is wearing a darker lip color and a very delicate earring. And her hair is pulled back neatly in a ponytail. It's not haphazard. Um, she clearly brushed her hair, you know, like she did it back, but then the ponytail itself has a soft, relaxed curl to it. I mean, I could show you pictures of Mary all day long. Let's look at what a floral looks like. This is what I mean by the wildflower floral. It's small, 
it's indistinct. Um, and she even has a bow at her neckline. And you can see that that bow is relaxed. It's not up like this, right? It's relaxed and hanging down. And her sleeves have a slight um, ballooning, but then they're tamed with the cuff. So they're not, they, they have the flare, but it doesn't flare open all the way where it could get in her way. Um, and then she's belted the dress uh, and she's wearing navy and brown. And the flowers are really, uh, they're lower contrast with the navy um, than like a stark white or a bright red. And then she's wearing a maxi dress, but it's very fitted and tailored up top through the hips and then it flares down below. She's got on a substantial earring, but it's kind of, it looks like it might have a filigree scroll, scroll type of pattern. No necklace, cause she's got that bow, but the bow kind of blends in with the rest of the dress. You have to lean in to kind of see it. See it. And then she's, um, I can't, I don't know what shoes she, she's wearing in this picture, but I'm, if knowing Mary the way I do, um, I'm going to guess they're navy or they match her belt and bag. And again, the soft curl, very touchable hair, and a soft makeup look. The, a smoky eye, nothing super sharp and distinct. Like she's not gonna do a harsh winged eyeliner. On her, that would be severe. On um, an edgy classic, that would just be razor sharp and perfect, right? Um, and the whole, and her lip is, is neutral and soft as well. Let's do one more. So here's how she's worn this scarf. This is essentially a cropped suit look, professional wear, um, very crisp. Her pants have that uh, crease in the front uh, this is obviously office wear, but her, um, her top is a slight A-line swing top, just slight, not so much that you think she might be headed to the beach, but it's not as tailored all the way down as another top might be. She's got a blazer that she's taken off for a minute. And then she has that scarf that has that nice flow. It's kind of mimicking a cowl neck. Um, but it's tamed. It's not out of control. It's not going to flop around anywhere. She's got the ties pulled around to the side. And when she wears her blazer, those two sides will be contained even more. Again, she's got the um, really nice ponytail with the soft curl, but you can see she hasn't pulled her ponytail. She hasn't slicked it back hard right? It's not perfectly, it's not like the slick, smooth helmet, you know, dance hair. Um, it's soft. Her bangs look like they might come down in a tendril by, you know, lunchtime. And, um, but it still looks very professional and neat. Um, but it's not rigid or severe. So, um, Mary Orton, I mean, she's just gorgeous. Memorandum.com. If you loved her, you know, if you love this style, you should definitely follow her. She's on Instagram as well. And, um, even if you're not in a business professional environment, you can take these same elements and, um, make them work in a casual way by adapting them. It's part of shopping your closet, right? You adapt it to what you have and what works for you. So I hope that this look at soft classic really helped because you can go too far. If minimal class, like if you need that minimal classic, then you can definitely go too far and wind up feeling um, trapped in a blanket, right? And if you don't get enough, you can feel too harsh. So I would love to know is soft classic resonating with you, which part of it resonates with you. 
um, what is the detail that jumped out at you and what um, are you going to try incorporating into you? Did you recognize some of your own wardrobe in here? Or did you look at it and say, well, now I know why I don't wear that thing because Okay, um, looks like my internet froze and I don't know where I lost you. So um, I don't know which part to repeat. So you can tell me where we left off and then I will, uh, I can try to remember what I said after that. Um, but basically I wanna know what you got out of this. Did it confirm for you that you're soft classic? Did it confirm to you that you are definitely not? And um, if you are, what were your favorite elements and what are you going to incorporate? What are you already incorporating? I just, I'd love to know more. So let's take a look at the comments in chat because this is the best part. Anita, hi, Anita, I haven't seen you in ages. I'm glad you're here. Kathy says, hi, April, so happy to get to enjoy the conversation live. Well, Kathy, I'm thrilled you get to enjoy it live too because that's the most fun. Christine, thank you so much for putting your name. Says first time being able to join live. Well, I'm glad you're here, and I hope you'll get to enjoy us uh, join us live other times as well. Karen says a soft cardigan shell twin set is my favorite soft classic item, and that's a great like soft classics do love matching. So that matching shell and cardigan, matching your earrings to your necklace. Um, that that's very much a thing for you, partly because you don't want the additional contrast. Um, one of you says, is gingham considered soft, cute, or both? It's minimal. And then you can make it lean any way you want to based on what you pair it with. Janet says, I thought for sure cute, now soft has me wondering, sigh. Well, I mean, it might be both, but it's really the difference between what do those bows look like? What does your floral look like? Because there is overlap in the general, but how it looks, how you execute it is going to be very different. Uh, one of you says soft sounds more muted than cute. It is definitely. The volume level is totally different. It's relaxed. You're trying to relax the outfit. Um, one of you says, I'm shocked. I think this might be me still waiting on sporty though. Well, it, there could be some sporty too. You're not probably not just one thing. So there could be some of this, there could be some of that and adding just enough of each one is how you come up with your signature style. One of you says soft classic is more mellow and subtle. Yes, subtle is a key word. Cute is not subtle. Soft is subtle. Melody says you make all the twists sound likable. I want aspects of all of them. Well, they are all likable. They're all beautiful. They're all wonderful. Um, and they're all different. And it, I get it. It's like that, that style envy, right? It's so appealing on the women who wear it, that it's right for them, that it makes you think you want to wear it too. Um, and I'm glad I make them all sound, sound appealing because they are, but figuring out which ones, um, I love Mary Orton's style. I could not wear that. I cannot, I cannot. Um, but I love to admire it on her. One of you says, yes, soft classic. You're describing me in relaxed clothing, French makeup, hair, and jewelry. I do occasionally wear larger necklaces, but with tiny earrings. 
I do love leather and metal, but rounded edges. Boho, joining this group is helping me with balance and not overdoing it. Thank you. Oh, that was Jennifer. Thanks for saying your name, Jennifer. Yeah, so um, mixing in a little bit of that edgy could make you a little boho. Um, you'll notice that Mary brought in a little edgy with a little bit of destroyed jeans on the outfit with the cow neck sweater, but that's not a boho outfit. Um, just It's just a little bit of edgy. It's getting the right details uh, of soft and edgy together is what makes it boho. So she has a little bit of destroyed on her jeans here, but just a little bit. It's not overtly, and maybe she needed that because this was just a little too much softness for her that day. Or maybe she's just got a little bit of edge to her. Never met her personally, <laughs> ever. So, um, and then there was maybe another one that she had a little bit of, or no, she brought in a little bit of sporty. Um, but yeah. And the French makeup can be any of the twists, but the soft version will not have the bold, bold red lip, most likely. So it sounds like my almost equal minimal cute is more like 50 minimal and 25 cute, 25 soft. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Just joined Love Your Sweater Midnight Blue. Yeah, so I'm not wearing all black today. This is navy and black. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> but thank you. I love this sweater. April, it's Jan. Does body height and shape fall into play as much as personality for each twist? I'm a tall, lean pair, and I do enjoy silk and velvet, scarves and soft cashmere sweaters. Kind of softens the angular parts of my upper body thoughts. So your body shape does not have any determination on what your twists are, but it does affect how you execute it, right? So there can be things that are fabulous for your body shape that don't match up with your twist and you're like, no, thank you. So just find another way to do it, right? Um, so you just look at how to execute each one so that they match up. But um, no, this is all about your style, what you really love and uh, how that reflects you. And then you can take that and make it work with your body shape. Appreciate picture samples really helps understand the detail of the specific classic style. Well, I'm so glad. Um, I'm such a visual learner, like you can tell me and I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I have to see it. And this, this is one of the reasons it takes me so long to write these posts is finding the pictures that perfectly uh, demonstrate my point without muddying the waters is really hard. It takes a long time. It's Jan again. I really love these images. I'm surprisingly relating to these. I'm not surprised, Jan. I see you wearing these details in your outfits. But I'm glad you see it now. Um, KDJ says, hi, April. Would you consider making a video about classic preppy style things? So we talked about this yesterday. Um, these posts take me weeks to write, like full-time weeks, because they're so in-depth and detailed, finding the pictures takes forever. And I know I preppy classic, quirky classic, artsy classic came up yesterday, um, boho classic. Um, they're all ones that I could write and some of them I've even outlined, but I just have not had, I, I don't have three weeks to do these in the foreseeable future. And, um, you know, I come in here and I can, I can, share it with you in like 45 minutes, but the preparation that goes into this in advance, like I, uh, that's the, the part you don't see on the back end is how much work is involved. And so I have a list of them. It's not going to happen soon. I'll be completely honest. Like 
even the chances of it happening this year are slim to none because I've just, uh, I've got a lot, a lot going on and, um, but it could happen. I, I know a lot of you would love it. I would love to be able to do it. I just, they are super time intensive. Mirka says, now I know why I don't like dropped shoulder lines or long necklaces. I'm not soft at all. I also have a little black dress made of black lace. It has a, long, a visible long zipper in the back, but I don't feel great in it, even though it's a great dress and it fits me perfectly. Is it the lace that makes it off for me? Well, probably, and it depends on the pattern in the lace. So um, like I said yesterday, I can wear a lace pattern. I'm going to wear lace if the pattern is stabby and angular, but if it's soft and swirly twirly, no way, no. So I would say it's the lace, yes. Christina says, I love the way she uses a big star scarf instead of a, oh, it bumped up on me. Hold on, I gotta find you again. Okay. I love the way she uses a big scarf instead of a cardigan tied with a belt. I know it's beautiful. It's very creative and it's just perfect for this aesthetic. And it's just a uh, unique um, way to bring that in and enjoy a scarf that she loves. Patty says drop shoulders take up much real estate in my closet. Same with small thin stripes. And Patty, how do you feel in those? Phyllis, thanks for putting your name, says, so this has been very instructive for me. Although my quiz results were overwhelming, minimal classic, I wondered if I could also have a bit of soft worked in. I've discovered probably not. The only two components I do like are one, I do wear scarves, especially in the winter, and two, amongst all my black loafers and pointy toed shoes. I do have one pair of round ballet flats, but with no ornamentation or details. So glad I tuned in for this. So I'm glad you did too. Any style twist can wear scarves. And that's something we actually talked about in the society this season. So scarves are not exclusive to soft classics. They are just a, uh, an accessory that they can work with a lot. They naturally go along with um, their twist. Um, so you can still love scarves and not be soft. And you can have round ballet flats with no ornamentation or details and also not be soft. That can also be minimal or cute. So, you know, these details that I've shared, a lot of them um, can be worn by other style twists, it depends on how you wear it and what you pair it with. I'm just pointing out things that you are definitely attracted to in this particular twist. Amy says, would you say Kate Middleton leans cute where Princess Diana leans soft? Most definitely. And if you look at Kate Middleton, she loves um, like the gathered sleeve. Uh, she loves a neat structured bow. Um, she, she wears more color. Uh, she definitely brings in a little bit of that playfulness. So cute, it's playful. Um, where uh, Princess Diana was definitely uh, in the softer end of things. Um, oh, Amy is telling me I was asking if it resonated with anyone. Well, that's good. Facebook user says it's taped, isn't it? So no worries. Well, it is through the internet. <laughs> so if the internet freezes, the recording freezes also. My screen froze. I don't know if I froze on your end. So we'll see. And the part that I was talking about was I was just asking you questions. So the informational part, uh, it should be fine. Lana says, definitely resonating with me. Well-fitting base with soft touches in cardigan hems, scarves, rounded toe shoes, comfort. Yes. So for a soft classic, comfort's a deal breaker. If it's not physically comfortable to you, then you'll pass. 
right? Um, where I like to be comfortable, but I am willing to sacrifice comfort for style to a point, right? But yeah. I do not own a very comfortable shoe collection for my day to day shoes. I'm willing to suffer for cute shoes. <laughs> And soft classic isn't likely to do that. Kathy says it definitely confirmed that I am not soft, 0% soft in the quiz. Well, then that's helpful. And now you know what to stay away from. Maybe there's some of these elements in your closet and you're like, now I know why I don't ever wear that. And you can avoid buying them in the future. Melody says, I like soft hair and makeup and I love the look of a soft outer layer on others. I don't know if it works on me. Well, Melody, you're really the only one who will be able to answer that question. And next week, as we do this style twist challenge, is the perfect time to play around with that. And it could be that a soft outer layer is the wrong way for you to incorporate your softness. Just because Jessica Alba does it doesn't mean you have to do it. You could do it um, in your jewelry or your hair and makeup might be enough softness for you. It might be um, the texture and feel of your clothes. It could be a rounded edge, um, a little bit of a drape in a wave in the fabric. So there are, I, I've been saying this every day, this is like a buffet. I have laid out lots of options for you to be able to incorporate this if it's what you love, but you don't have to like or use all of them. You can pick and choose what works for you. I don't like all the edgy options. There are a lot of edgy things that I wouldn't wear because they're just not the right way of incorporating the details for me. Karen says, totally me and I want to steal all of Mary's casual looks. I I wish she did more casual looks, but that's not what her blog is based on. It's based on business professional wear, which we all know I love. Um, but I love it when she shows a, a casual look. Kelly says, thank you, April. Now I know why some classic outfits feel too severe for me. I need soft blurred edges with some structure, flow, and low contrast. Yes. I'm so glad that helped. Michelle says, I'm a pair, so I'm going to try incorporate, try incorporating a cowl neck into my wardrobe, it brings attention up, which works for my body type. And I like the softness factor. Yeah, that's a perfect combination for you. I cannot wear a cowl neck. Lynn says, I'm only 8% soft classic, yet I really love the combination of the classic look with just a bit of softness. I was drawn to these pictures. I might have to look at this more, thanks so much. Well, you're welcome. And I say this every day too, but um, the quiz is not perfect at all. And I'm not trying to tell you who or what you are. It's a tool. It's meant to be fun. And if you take the quiz and you're like, yes, I totally resonate with what this guy gave me. Awesome. And if you read it and you're like, who are you talking about? Because this is not me. Then ignore it. Do not get hung up on the quiz results. You know you way better than I do, way better than a quiz does. You get to decide so do not take this quiz as gospel. It's not. It's not. Also, when you read it and you're like, I am not cute. Well, read what cute classic actually means before you decide that. <laughs> or, before, you know, what soft classic means before you decide that. Because a lot of you have been really surprised this week and said, oh, you know, actually that is, that is me. And you just had this preconceived notion of what it meant. And instead of reading the post, you kind of wrote it off as crazy talk. Um, but it could also be wrong. And when you take the quiz, ignore the shoulds. Don't factor in anything that limits you. I'm a mom. I can't wear that. So I'm going to pick this instead. <sighs> I don't live in New York. I can't wear that. So I'll pick what I would wear where I live. Mm -mm. No, no, no. That's backwards. What would you wear in a perfect world? If you weren't worried about anyone judging you, 
if you were taller, <laughs> some of you are like, but I'm petite and so I could never wear that. And so I chose this thing. Don't do that. Um, I have six dogs and they'll get my clothes dirty. So I would choose, no, no, forget about, let's pretend your dogs don't shed and they don't jump up on you and they don't, you know, and that you can walk the dog in six inch heels. You know, just don't take into the, don't, well, I can't because, mm -mm. no, no, no. Take it as though none of that mattered and you'll get a more accurate result because a lot of you uh, sabotage yourselves with this twist quiz by um, leaning into the expectations that the world has put on you. So Lynn, it's entirely possible that you are more than 8% soft classic. If this like makes your heart sing, seeing and hearing this, then go for it. Try it out, see how it feels. Emily says, how would one do soft without giving off an overly approachable vibe um, by not doing too much soft. More minimal. And if you have some edgy to you, add some of that. Um, if it's not you, if you're not approachable, then, then this probably isn't for you. Um, but it's it would be by not doing too much soft. Stephanie says, I love this look on others and I've tried it many times, but never feels right on me. Looking forward to hearing about sporty. Stephanie, I totally get it because I did the same thing. When I became a mom, I thought I needed to be this woman. So I tried to dress like this woman because good moms are soft. And I did it to myself for years and it was so wrong for me and everyone around me. And so I know exactly, exactly how you feel. Janet says health issues require some of the soft elements. Other soft elements appeal to me as well. However, believe I'm still leaning cute. And that happens, Janet. That's exactly what I mean. Um, pretend that those health issues don't exist and take the quiz. And then after you can figure out how your real twist works with that. And another great example of this is sporty. A lot of you end up with sporty results because you're choosing sporty things because the lifestyle you have requires some sporty elements. And you know, when my kids were so little, I needed more of those sporty elements because that was just my lifestyle. I needed to be able to outrun my kids in the parking lot. I needed to get down on the floor and tie shoes, um, you know, but I've learned that I can have what I need from sporty without looking sporty because I am not sporty. Um, so take the quiz, forget the health issues. You may still end up bringing in some soft elements, but maybe you can do it in a way that feels more accurate to your actual twist. Lana says, would movement in fabrics be part of soft? Yes, soft movement in your fabric. Um, definitely. Christine says, very helpful again today. I like bits of cute, edgy, and soft, but it seems I am drawn to much of the soft styling. I'll just have to see if it looks as good on me as on Mary. Well, that would be holding ourselves to a very high standard. First of all, Mary is Mary. And second of all, these photos are professionally taken and uh, her clothes are, I guarantee you, professionally tailored and the photos are edited. That's just, this is basically a magazine, right? And so expecting to look like her is not um, fair to you because she is, doing all of these other extra things, right? Um, and you're not going to walk around as an edited photo. I don't mean she's like Photoshopping her body to look different. I I don't know, but I, I don't think so. Like there's nothing at this that I'm like, okay, I see where you shaved off this. No, but like the lighting is softened and diffused. Um, it's kind of like how I've told you 
some of you will be like, oh my gosh, April, your, your skin, you glow like an angel. You've got this perfect, um, you know, milky white skin. And I don't, it's the camera. This is my webcam that makes my skin look, I have freckles and lines and I'm kind of ruddy. Like my skin undertone is naturally red. Um, but this, just the, this camera, the way it is and the light, my skin looks much nicer on this camera than it does in real life. I'm not intentionally trying to change it. It's just how it comes across on film. And, you know, I can tell you that the editing on her photos, it's been blurred. It's been softened. Maybe she does have beautiful baby skin. Maybe she doesn't. So, you know, don't hold yourself to that standard. Uh, it's not fair to you. You're not an edited photo. Um, so do it on so that it looks great on you as you and be fair to you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. After watching this, I think I am a soft classic when I am home, but when I go out, I am more edgy, minimal classic, Lori. Maybe. Maybe, and that could just be uh, the difference in what your needs are for that moment and that day. Um, and you might have some of both in you and just one comes out more strongly at home and one comes out more strongly um, when you go out. Maybe you need that edge when you go out to protect your soft. Or maybe you're using it that way. So yeah, you're, yeah, you'll have to just experiment and see. Equally soft and edgy, 50, 15% each, but prefer the soft mostly. For example, example, almond toe shoes versus pointy toe. I wear the shawl collar a lot and a good number of these features I've been wearing for a long time. Thanks for these videos with explanations and examples. Well, you're welcome. And maybe the edgy really isn't right for you. So if that doesn't feel true, then just check it. How would you tone down a cute to soft in one outfit? Uh, anything that's going up needs to come down. Less contrast and um, soften the edges. I'm without seeing the outfit, I couldn't possibly tell you, but those are just the three that, generalities that come to mind. Sandra says, I liked the little flowers, ruffles, watercolors, but am also cute and rarely subtle. Well, do you like them on her or do you like them on you? Because there's a difference. And that's a lesson that we all have to learn. Um, it's a lesson I still have to remind myself of. I could look at Mary and be like, oh my gosh, I want to wear that too. Because she looks so good. Because it's so good for her but I would feel ridiculous in it. So, um, but you can tone down a cute, um, but if you're cute and rarely subtle, then your ruffles will be up, right? They'll have some life to them. Um, and the little, I don't know. I mean, it's just, you try it out and, and experiment and see what feels right. Leela says, what is Mary's website? It's memorandum.com. Lynn says, can you share a little bit more about I love Mary style, but I could not, could not wear it. I understand that may not be your personality yet. If you love it, just curious things. Well, it's more a matter of me admiring something that looks so great on her because it suits her so perfectly. I can admire all kinds of styles. I see the beauty and style in her style, but that doesn't mean I can, I would feel comfortable wearing it. Just like I can look at a, I can look at anything and be like, oh, I just, that's beautiful. But doesn't mean I want to own it or put it on my body, bring it home with me, adapt it or adopt it, right? Um, so you can love other people's style doesn't mean it's the right style for you. Her style is beautiful, but it's not me, but I, 
it's beautiful. You don't have to hate the other styles to not wear them. You can like all of them from a distance, but you're only going to want to wear certain things. I hope that makes sense. Sam says, this is definitely me. Cozy, long cardigans, cowl necks, lace, maxi skirts, scarves, etc. but with a minimal base, solids, and with cute accents. I also have a soft hair and makeup look. I'm definitely minimal with soft and cute touches. Perfect. Oh, Sam, I totally see that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, you definitely. Is anyone able to take the quiz? Yeah, anyone can take the quiz. It's at stunningstyle.com forward slash style dash quiz. And we can add the link here. Melody says, I appreciate the time you take to add the perfect pictures. Well, thank you because it really does take forever because I can find pictures that I'm like, well, that kind of shows it, but then that's gonna confuse them because it's got this in it. Like I try to find pictures that perfectly demonstrate my point without adding any extra elements that you're gonna be like, but what about that? That's, and I'm like, well, just ignore the, you know, I don't want you to have to be like, well, just tune out the thing that she's doing. Um, so uh, it takes a long time because they're not labeled that way on Pinterest, <laughs> are they? I can't Google cute classic outfit and they'll pop up for me. I have to just filter and scroll. Jan says, I'm drawn to minimalist style. Oh, there we go. Hold on. I've got to find it again. I'm drawn to minimalist style, but look best in muted colors. And I like small patterns. I really don't like these very soft pictures and can't relate to that extreme. Well, you can love minimalist style in muted colors and small patterns that small pattern might be part of the softness. Um, but you can wear minimal style in muted colors. So just take the elements that work for you and adapt them to the rest of the things that work for you. It's not, none of these are requirements. You don't have to wear all of it. Um, it's pick and choose what, which parts work for you. So, the scarf, if that's not you, then just be like, well, this is not doing the scarf, but I do like these small patterns. Um, and maybe you prefer the low contrast because of the muted soft colors that you prefer. I think I may be soft, but fighting it because of wrong ideas of what that means. I struggle with finding the right balance of comfort and structure. My body looks better in tailored clothing, but I'm more physically comfortable in less structured clothing, but emotionally uncomfortable if I feel frumpy. Oh, I get it. I do. Um, you can buy tailored clothing that is comfortable. It just, it's all about the fabrics, what they're made of and um, proper fit. You know, it can't, so I get it and I, and it can happen. It just, it will take a learning curve and some experimentation on your part. So in the Stunning Style Society this year, we're doing the year of the classic style twist. And every week there will be a lesson on your classic style twist that we're covering um, and really learning how to incorporate this into your wardrobe really uh, get going on your signature style and figuring that out. And so the doors to the society will open soon. If you're not on the waiting list yet, you'll be the first to know by joining and you can learn more about it by going to stunningstyle.com forward slash society. Blessed to be curly. Yes, you are. Says, hi there, would it be possible to create a chart that briefly describes each twist to compare side by side? I'm a classic sporty with strong softness as secondary things. Well, that's a great idea. I just, I don't have time. I'm being, to be totally honest, I don't have time for that right now. Maybe eventually. I love suggestions. Love them. So always feel free to give me ideas and suggestions and, I, and requests. I keep a list of them. But... That's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, 
but I'll add it to my list because it would be super helpful. And I love ideas. So thank you for bringing it up. Mirka says, yes, it's floral lace. Well, Mirka, there's your trouble. Leslie said, so would eyelet be more cute or soft? Um, it's usually more cute because it's a pretty structured. Eyelet usually comes in a very structured fabric and it tends to come in cute um, styles. And so like soft and cute might both like a full skirt, but the cute skirt is going to be in a structured fabric that stands up a little bit. And a soft is going to have one that lays down and kind of flows. And eyelet comes in structured stiff cottons because it has to be embroidered around the edge. Um, I'm not saying never ever, you could show me one and be like, well, go look at this one. And I could be like, you're right, that is a soft eyelet. But eyelet's usually pretty structured. Millie says you froze for not for long. Well, good. Is lace just soft? No. Lace can be cute also. Um, it depends on the fabric and the pattern of the lace. So how soft is the fabric or how structured is the fabric and how and what is the pattern like? This is Lori. Thanks for putting your name, Lori. Not only would I wear most of the elements in Mary's outfits, when I go shopping with my daughter, if I pull or tug at my clothing, she tells me to take it off as she knows I'll never wear it. I also scored high on the soft classic scale and have worked as a therapist. You've got that special heart that can be a therapist. That that would, I, I couldn't, that would kill me <laughs> uh, like from the inside out. Um, and so we're grateful for people like you and that, that tugging or pulling that can be a soft classic thing, but it can also be a minimal classic thing. Like I cannot tolerate clothes that I have to adjust throughout the day, but the difference is our reasons, like our motives. My motive is you're distracting me. That's annoying because I don't want to think about you anymore where a soft classics reason is this is really uncomfortable. Like I cannot stand how this feels on my skin. This is itchy. I can feel that tag. This seam is chafing me. And so our motives are very different. Kathy says, exactly. I have waterfall cardigans and rounded lapel jackets that I never wear. They are now going to be purged. Thank you those are soft. And if you're not soft, then that would explain why you don't like them. One of you says, I feel this so much. Well, the fact that you said feel, I'm glad. I'm glad that this helped you. Anita asks, I think Kate Middleton is a good example of soft classic. What do you think her twist is, April? Uh, cute. So that's, um, in fact, Kate Middleton was my example of cute classic for a long time. And when I redid the post, um, I swapped out her pictures for some others because it's very hard to find casual outfits of Kate Middleton because of her job and responsibilities. She is required to be dressed up most of the time. And that was not as easy for many of you to translate to make that shift into other styles of clothing, because most people don't need to dress up to that degree that often. And so I chose pictures that are um, more everyday type of style that more people could relate to. Um, but she has a playful quality that she adds to her outfits. I'm not going to say she never wears anything soft, but it's, it's usually cute classic. Tina says, I love simple, soft shaped jewelry, but also a large statement within the same piece. Just curious, is the bold considered minimal or edgy? Well, it can be soft and large and a statement. It's just not going to be a screaming statement. You know what I mean? So you might like a really large pendant 
but it's not going to be so high contrast with the rest of your outfit that that's what people see first. Your whole outfit is going to be very cohesive and there's not going to be usually a focal point where I love to have uh, high contrast colors and then a bold pop of color that you're like, there are your red shoes. That is the focal point of your outfit. I see it. And a soft classic is more likely to have a very cohesive look. So you might wear a statement piece, but it's not going to be so high contrast that people zero in on that. That is not your bullseye. Your whole outfit is your bullseye. You like to blend. So it could be minimal. It could be edgy. It could be soft. It depends on how you're executing this. Leela says, Grace Kelly, is Grace Kelly a soft example? Um, you know, I would have to go back and look, but maybe the thing is that the styles at the time of, of clothing, you know, was that very stiff structured uh, full skirt, like the style of the clothing leaned more, that was very popular at the time, leaned more cute classic. Um, but in her older years, <laughs> she did wear a little more of the softness. So I honestly have not um, analyzed her style enough to know, but that's something I'll have to think about. Uh, now you've got me curious, Leela. I don't have time to be curious right now. I'm trying to get the spring guy done. Um, are the new wide leg jean styles related to minimal or soft? Well, again, it depends on the jeans and how you wear them and what they look like. So you can have wide leg jeans that are super stiff, have zero stretch and could stand and walk off on their own because they are so structured. And that is not something a soft classic is going to like. You can also have wide leg jeans that are softer, have more stretch. They maybe collapse in a little at the leg um they feel good on and they can be softer because they they fall in so it depends on the jeans and yeah but you can wear them as a soft or as a minimal you can any minimal any classic style twist can wear them it just depends Patty says, I keep getting sporty because of lifestyle. I wonder if comfort is coming from a soft element. I missed the beginning and will take a full look soon. So Patty, you and I have had this conversation. Like, I, I think that um, you know, you stand on your feet for your job all day and comfort does matter because you're on your feet all day. Patty does hair. You need to be able to raise your arms and blow dry and cut and color, right? You cannot have something restricting you here. You require that comfort and flexibility and mobility. And you don't wanna be crying at the end of the day because your feet hurt. It's not just today you're on your feet, you're on your feet five, six days a week, right? So that comfort is really important to you for that reason. I don't know if it's because um, you're soft or not, but there, it could be coming from your lifestyle. One of you says, I'm getting so excited. Well, I am glad you're so excited. That fuels me. Thank you for encouraging women to appreciate and find beauty in themselves and not compare themselves to a photo. Well, you're welcome. And it's something that we have been uh, trained to do and lied to about. The media, they Photoshop the models. And I mean, they're not just boosting the color and giving a little soft haze. Like they shave off parts of their bodies. Like they, shrink them, stretch them, like they completely remake their, the models don't look that way. They don't. 
and it's not fair. We think that they do, and we're holding ourselves to a lie. And I'm not, Mary doesn't do that. So when you see my pictures, they're edited to, I'm trying to get the color to be accurate. Um, all pictures are edited to some point. So I, and I've told you I have terrible editing skills. I have terrible photography skills and terrible modeling skills. I have zero training in any of those things, but I'm trying to get the colors in my clothes to look like they really do in real life. Um, and I do the best I can with the limited whatever that I've got, but I don't uh, filter my skin. I mean, my picture's like from this distance, so that automatically does it, right? But I, I don't alter my shape. I don't, you know, I was showing, uh, there was a photographer that um, I met and I was like, yeah, this is my photography and I've got a lot of work to do. And he was like, so if I were you, I would edit out those stray hairs. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that because my, I really did have stray hairs. And just is what it is. So I don't alter my physical appearance in that way in my pictures, but I do adjust the colors to try to make them look right. Right. Um, and I think that's what Mary does too. And sometimes you're going for an artistic effect, right? So in the ones where she's kind of blurred and hazy, I think she's just going for an artistic effect. It's she's trying to make a beautiful photography experience for you. But I don't look at any of her pictures and go, oh, you shaved several inches off your thighs to make yourself look thinner, which some people do. And on the magazine covers, they definitely do. Um, I've never seen anything on hers that makes me think that she does that. I think that she just makes her pictures look as aesthetically pleasing and artistic as possible, not in an intention to deceive anyone. But I think it's also really important that you understand that she is creating an artistic thing. And I saw, this is something I've been meaning to share in a story. It's been on my mind a lot, um, but it's something I wanted to collect my thoughts about. I saw a, someone else share a really interesting thought in her stories and I, I recorded it. I asked her permission to share it. And she said, yes, because it was just such a great example that when you see social media, when you see websites like this, view it the same way you view a performance on stage. That's what it is. It's, um, it's artistic. It's meant to be viewed as a performance um, and not as a standard for anybody else to live up to. It's art. And if you can view it from that lens and appreciate it from that lens and not take it as a literal um, I'm not saying it anywhere near as eloquently as she did it, which is why I asked her permission to copy it and share it and obviously, um, reference and credit her when I do, um, it, it was just, I was like, yes, yes. And if we can all understand that that's what this is, it's a performance. It's meant to, uh, entertain and not meant to be a standard to live up to. So um, don't ever hold yourself up to anything you see on the internet, even in person. You just don't know, you know, like she might have lip injections or Botox or, I mean, I do my roots every three weeks. I am silver, 100% silver from here forward. But in the back, well, now he, my stylist back in the back before until not too long ago, I had no silver, no gray. It was like this weird equator. Now he's like, you're 50% silver in the back. Um, but I have to get my roots done every three weeks or I, my part looks this wide, right? Um, because my hair grows in so fast and it's such a high contrast with my hair color. Um, so this isn't my natural hair color. 
I have blonde eyebrows and eyelashes, so I tint my eyebrows and eyelashes and then I darken them every day and I wear mascara, right? Like, um, we all like to put our best foot forward and, um, and that looks different for each of us. You just, and you just don't know what else is going on in side someone else's mind or body or life and what you see is a perfect or fantastic version of this thing so i'll give you an example i was somewhere and this woman was talking to me and she was like oh my gosh you have six kids it is not fair that you have six kids and you're that thin and i said well the first, you know, my first three are triplets and I almost died carrying them. And I have permanent liver damage from that pregnancy that affects every part of my health today. And I can tell you, I would rather wear a larger pant size and have my liver functioning. So, you know, we all have a thing. And she was just like, oh, I would trade it in a heartbeat. <laughs> um, and you just, so anyway, that that's kind of a rant that I went on, but um, I don't ever want any of you to compare yourself to me or I'm not perfect. I don't run this business by myself. I don't do it all by a long shot. I have a team of people that help me. Um, I have cleaners come to my house once a week and we still, the kitchen's a disaster right now. I haven't had time to go up and clean up breakfast. The kids are home doing virtual school and you know, like my office is a wreck because I'm working on the spring guide and I have to, you know, zigzag my way out of here. And I really try to be as forthcoming and honest about that as possible because I am not perfect. I do not do it all and we all have our own struggles. So the only person you should ever compare yourself is to is yourself. Be the best version of yourself. You're competing only with yourself. And that's, I can't tell you how important that message is to me. I don't want my girls to grow up beating themselves up and comparing themselves to others. They are perfect in every way. And the only person that they need to compete with is themselves. Can I be a better version of myself? Then yes, go for it. So side note, it's side rant. And I'm glad that you see that message coming from me, that I want you to find the beauty in yourselves and not compare yourselves to a photo. Christine says, thanks for reminding me that Mary's photos are professional clothes exquisitely tailored, etc. I all have always measured myself against magazine models. No matter, no wonder I never measured up. I will be less har harsh on myself. Christine, I'm so glad. Because it is true. Um, and she has worked really hard to build a really powerful uh, business of her own. And she provides a lot of beautiful inspiration. And I can tell you that um, even though I don't wear the style that she wears, there are things that I've seen her wear that have inspired me in different ways that I can adapt, you know, and, and I can look at that and say, this is a beautiful picture. She worked really hard to uh, find these pieces, have them tailored so they fit her perfectly, style the outfit, go and have this photo shoot done, edit and produce this. It's a lot of work on her end and she's doing it to inspire and lift other women. And, um, you know, I think she's done a wonderful, wonderful job. And so I, I, I don't want this message to sound at all like I am 
uh, diminishing anything that she does. I think every, like, and I've never met the woman. I don't know. I don't know her, but I believe that she does what she does to inspire and to share, not to ever drag anybody down. But from a user end, it's, you don't often understand all that goes into it and all that's happening. And you think that she just walked out the door in this outfit and someone just randomly took this awesome picture of her and she's like, oh, cool. I'm just going to put it up. And there's so much that goes into it. But Christine, if you have, if you can have that shift in that mindset, then like my whole year was worth it. One person can see that. Um, then that, that gives me the happy tears. Um, so thank you for telling me that. Um, Indelo says, Jessica Alba was my style crush before I discovered your site. I love how she incorporates soft, edgy, and sporty in her looks. And she does. And she, um, sometimes she leans into the boho a little bit. Sometimes she leans into the edgy a little bit, but if you notice, most of her tried and true looks fall into this soft classic look, maybe with a little edgy, um, maybe not, but, um, you know, she does bring in a little bit of those others also when she needs them and wants them. One of you says, do you mean that if you are a mix of style twists, the Academy will still work as far as advice? So, Ooh, uh, by the academy so <laughs> i know there's some confusion about my products and what is what we're really working on clarifying that um for you but the, so the academy is uh the, the style academy is where my courses are the uh style your silhouette sh body shape course and the perfectly put together find your style course and then I have the Stunning Style Society, which is different, where I curate a classic style wardrobe every season. That's what I've been shopping for. I shop and I order all the things and I curate a whole wardrobe. I create 100 outfits. I put them on a calendar and build a shopping portal, customized shopping portal. And in the shopping portal, I provide options for each of the classic style twists for each of the featured items. So yes all of it still works based um let me look at the question again even if you have a mix of style twists so the but i because i know people are confused about that i'd like to clarify what you're asking so if you can comment again if you're still here i can't see your name but um so if you love classic style then yes the society and the wardrobe guides are a great option for you no matter what your style is, whether you're classic or not, the courses work for everybody. The society and the wardrobe guides are the only things, the only thing I have that is strictly classic style. So yes, all of them work. And then you just kind of work through marrying them, I guess. So you can dress for your body shape and incorporate your classic style twists, you just kind of figure out how they work together. And as we go through the year of the classic, uh, the year of the style twists in the society, we'll be breaking down these style twists in depth all year long. Uh, one of you says, I thought for a long time that I was a soft classic, but I only like it on other people. It's so freeing to realize I can like something and not look to it to define me. I'm so glad you figured it out because it's a mistake that we all make at some point in our lives because we admire how beautiful it is on someone else that it really does suit. So learning to separate that is such a game changer and I totally get it. I think her style is phenomenal. And I know I can't wear that, but there's a time when I would have tried. Christine says, I think you have great modeling skills. Oh, Christine, you're so nice. I have like four poses. <laughs> and now, you know, you're like, there's one, there's number two, there's number three, and there's number four. She got them all. And sometimes when my husband takes my pictures, I'll be like, oh, I've got to come up with another pose. Like, 
they're going to figure this out that I only do four things, but like sometimes I'll experiment with it. And, and like, I, cause I've read about, and they're like, do the fake laugh. And I'm all, <laughs> that's what I look like when I'm trying to fake laugh in a picture. And I'm like, that's not working. So if there's a picture of me laughing, it's because my husband is messing with me while he's taking the pictures and I am actually laughing, but I can't do the fake laugh or like the, anyway, like there's this, like I tried the whole, like sitting on the steps with your, you know, how you've got your legs spread. And I'm like, I need to close that. That just, it's not me. So yeah, no, I just, you know, I've got my four and whatever, lather, rinse, repeat. <laughs> I've practiced them a lot. Like I've tried doing more fun ones. It's just, no. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Linda says that's exactly how my hair is graying. <gasps> Linda, we're gray hair twins. I didn't, I've never seen any, well, I guess because we're coloring our hair, right? And nobody, we're not seeing it on other people because we look weird doing that. Like it's, it's a distinct, sharp line and people are like, why don't you go silver? Because I would look weird if I did. It's not like my mom was always said, oh, my very favorite was when my hair went salt and pepper. Well, I was looking forward to that and it didn't happen. <laughs> I did not have that beautiful salt and pepper. Like it's not like one of my friends, um, she's got this beautiful silver streak, like straight out of a magazine not me. It's coming in so weird. So someday I'm looking forward to having that beautiful silver hair. But in the meantime, I really need to get my roots done every two weeks. I just don't have the time for it. So I've settled on three because it's that bad. Christine says, you have such a wonderful body positive statements. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Like it's so important to me. I work really, really hard to be body positive and um, and all those things, it's, it is very important to me, not just for myself, um, and not just for all of you, uh, but for my girls. And if I can start sharing this message, then we can spread it and more of our girls will grow up and we'll get it right. It took me a while to get here. Um, and, uh, to say that I was 100% body positive on myself would be a lie because that's just not true, but I work hard on it. I love my body more than I ever have for all of its, um, beauty and imperfections. I appreciate everything that my body has done for me. I appreciate my liver. I wish it worked right. I appreciate the sacrifice it made to bring those three babies into this world and that it is still kicking <laughs> and that I'm still kicking, right? So I, instead of being angry at it, which I was for a long time because it made me very sick, I've learned to be grateful for what it did and that it's still going. Um, because other women have had to have transplants or died, you know, like I am on the lucky end of it. One of you says, thank you so much for your honesty and how you encourage people to be themselves. That's why I joined the society, Jennifer. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. I thank you. I, it's important to me. Lori says, many years ago, I modeled. The photographs were frequently a combination of several people. It may be a person's feet, another's legs, yet another stomach, hips, breast, arms, eyes, and so on. Well, I didn't know that. That's even worse. <laughs> although and what I do know though is like you know talking about the body shapes if you know if they're doing a full body shot they tend to choose rectangle and um inverted triangle body shapes and if they're doing um like if they're doing chopped up body shapes like just focusing on certain body parts they'll pick other body shapes because they're only using part of it, right? They dissect us. It's, it's disgusting. It is. So like if they're going, showing just legs and stuff, they're going to go for an apple because nobody has better legs than an apple. Like really, you know? And um, yeah, there's just so much bad stuff going on in the industry and being honest about it. So Lori, I really appreciate you sharing that and being honest about what, is going on and that it's so false. 
if we understand that they're trying to create it, that's that's too far that's way too far that's totally different than tailoring your clothes and you know editing the pictures for color or like an artistic you know hazy effect or whatever shopping no i'm not okay with that um let's see one of you says love the look of soft classic when i look back at outfits that i used to love to wear to work it is clear that soft classic was me we'll have to add it to my not leaving the house look why can't you wear it out of the house or are you saying you're not wearing it in around the house and you did wear it out of the house Either way, I'm glad that you resonate with it and um, I hope you incorporate it in all of your stuff because if it's you, then it's you. Lori says, also many of my modeling photographs had staples, paper clips, and duct tape for instant tailoring for them. Uh, yeah, because when I order these clothes for the guide and I'm like, this is not how it was fitting on the model, you clearly it's so wide and boxy and that is not how it looked on her. Well, if you think that what we want to buy is the way it fits on her, then just make the clothes that way. Okay. Oh, it's so aggravating. That's why I have to order everything so that I don't recommend something. And then you all get it and you're like, this is awful. The color is all wrong. The fit is terrible. I check it all first. So yeah. Thank you for telling Lori. Thank you for sharing that. Like it's so important for us to, understand what's going into this and um one of you asks i may have missed it but are peplums soft they can be there's a variety of peplums a lot of times they're cute though because they're so perky and up um but you can have a soft relaxed peplum it very much depends on the fabric and the construction of the top so you can even have a minimal peplum. There's a picture I can think of off, right off the top of my head. I cannot locate it in 10 seconds or less, so I'm not going to get it. But um, it's of a peplum top with a pleated, crisp, flat peplum that's not flaring or waving or, you know, um, but it's in a less structured fabric. And the pleats are very crisp and tailored and it's not flaring, you know, it's laying down against her body. Um, so I personally don't typically wear peplum, but I've had jackets that call themselves peplum, but what they really are is tailored. Um, but edgy, I mean, but soft and cute you can both wear peplum and minimal. So, okay, I hope that answers your questions. Um, those are all the questions uh, and comments I see. Sometimes they just don't show up for me live and the feed moves so fast. You've seen, I have to stop and go find my spot again because it's bumped up on me. So if I missed your comment or question, I apologize. It was not intentional. And um, I want to thank you again for joining me because this is always so much fun and the conversation after is my favorite part i love chatting with all of you and i really appreciate that you spend this time with me i really do i know how important your time is and um that you spend some of it with me really means a lot to me and i try to make sure that any time we spend together is valuable to you so thank you again for joining me tomorrow we'll be talking about sporty classic it'll be the final installment of this uh, classic style twist series and again we're doing it in preparation for the style twist challenge next week so if you haven't joined the challenge go to stunningstyle.com forward slash twist to join and then the first outfit will be coming on Sunday so that you'll have time to shop your closet and wear it on Monday. So much fun. So much fun. You don't want to miss it. And it's the perfect way to experiment with these twists. But one of you says, thank you for this wonderful conversation. So fun. Well, that is the goal. It's supposed to be fun. And I usually don't cry. So... <laughs> Got a little bit heavy there for a minute, but we like to have fun. My kind of fun, you know, serious fun. <laughs> um, 
Have a wonderful rest of your day. Join me again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time, same time, same place, and we will talk about Sporty Classic. Have a great day.